Hello and welcome everybody. This is already a great Gurtam tradition to gather telematics experts and professionals from all over the globe almost every Thursday for Gurtam meetups. In the end, the pandemic became a double-edged sword and inspired us to bring to life this beautiful initiative of sharing experiences on a permanent basis. Today, we'll dedicate about one hour to electric vehicles discussion, their implementation in European markets and impact on telematics. Let's find out if the electric vehicles tendency is a reality, our future or just a fantasy. If this is the first time you have joined us, I strongly recommend you checking out our previous discussions, webinars, workshops and Gurta meetups. Please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel to always stay up to date. Please welcome our experts. David John Jeffcott, owner and sales director at IoT Solution Italy. Hello, David. Hello. Hello. Hi. And Andrian Jankowski, technical manager at CarCops Autovalve, Estonia. It's nice to see you here. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. This Gurta meetup will be hosted by my charming colleague Anna Setishur, who is senior business development manager at Vialon Division. And by my colleague Valerie Cherkasova, who is also a senior business development manager at Vialon Division at Gurta. We both work with European partners for several years already, so we envision the growing popularity of electric vehicles expansion, specifically in European countries. We're really glad to welcome you all at our today's event and together with Valerie and our expert partners, we'll try to make this event thought provoking. Dear audience, in our online YouTube chat, you can openly share your thoughts on this topic, as well as any questions related to the electric vehicles market. At the end of this event, we'll have a small Q&A session and we'll address the most interesting questions from the chat to our trusted partners. So, I suggest we start our talk from the growth curve of the electric vehicles that we can observe in the last years. Unlike other electric vehicles markets, Europe has seen significant electric vehicles growth. For example, in 2019, sales increased by 44%. This is the highest rate since 2016. The European Union's new emission standards, 95 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer for passenger cars, could also boost electric vehicle sales because it says that 95% of the fleet must meet the standard in 2020 and 100% in 2021. You can also see the diagram of nine of the top 10 markets for electric vehicle penetration rate on your screens. So, according to your vision, partners, what are the main reasons behind the recent growth of electric vehicle segment in Europe? Andrian, would you like to start? Mm, yeah, why not? So this is a really interesting question. And I believe that the main grow and the demand for this segment come from the interesting uh, in a more environmentally friendly and cheaper type of fuel. Uh, also, I have a slide to show you. Hold on. So yeah, I came up, I bring here uh, pretty much the prices, the base, the basic rates in Estonia, uh, how much cost like uh, charge here, uh, electric fillings in an electric filling station, you can say like that. And here we have also two examples for uh, first one is the Porsche Taycan, what's actually give to fill it up 88 kilo, kilowatts per hour, what's cost like 16, uh, euros and 72 cents what's obviously really cheap if you're gonna look up to some other porsche type of vehicle you're definitely gonna pay more for the diesel or gasoline engine and also if we're gonna look to other example what's his nissan leaf uh, here it's take way less to charge like 28.8 kilobytes per hour and it costs only five euro and 47 cents uh, for me uh, 
it seems the way cheaper uh, to even uh, put in our in like in the fleet that kind of vehicle so i guess this uh segment gonna grow in that like for the ages just just need to time for it I can say like that yeah that's definitely cheaper i can agree so david i know that you are also keen on this topic and uh, you have a lot of information to share david uh, would you like to express your opinion on this question yes um well um with your permission, I'd just like to give some pointers and a few slides about this anticipating change or the introduction of EVs. Um, so I think we should look to, um, this is a kind of a phrase that uh, I'm very keen on. Um, electric vehicles are going to arrive whichever way it is, whether it's five years, 10 years, it's going to happen. Um, and we believe that electric vehicles will make the existing uh, vehicle fleets obsolete. Um, so when we're talking about a disruption, which it will be a disruption in the vehicle market, um, we need to understand that in the future, we will not be talking about kilometers per litre, but we're talking about kilometers per kilowatt hour. Um, we, we are also looking at the autonomy on the battery charge. We're looking at parameters such as temperature and terrain effects. And also from the echo driving, we're looking at things like regenerative braking balance. Um, so before I just go into some of the details, just uh, think about what happened to Kodak, IBM PCs, Blackberry, Polaroid, Nokia phones. They have all disappeared due to disruption in technology. And this is what we think is going to happen. This is a photograph of New York Easter Day Parade in 1900. And as you can see, it's full of horses and carriages and there is just one motor vehicle there. 13 years later, this is the same parade with only one horse and all of the rest are motor vehicles. So what we're saying here is in 13 years, the motor car killed horses and carriages. And history tells us that technology adoption does not just make a straight curve. It is actually an exponential S curve. And I've prepared this kind of graph, which just shows that we are now from 2020, we're in this disruption zone. And, and this is being driven by battery prices, which are falling from 215 uh, from the year 215 from 500 euro per kilowatt hour and today we are around 100 euro per kilowatt hour and scheduled to go down by 2040 down to 50 euro and we've all seen these uh, news um, these news uh, items regarding battery factories being built all over Europe for instance the other thing is that the, um, the European sales are growing dramatically. So um, they are still represent quite a, a small proportion of the overall vehicle, but it is growing. And uh, last year was 1.4 million uh, was sold actually in Europe. The other issue, which is now um, escalating and um, increasing the rate of change is in fact the bans being um, uh, being um, implemented by countries to conform to the environmental situation and you know Norway are pretty well there banning all ICV vehicles um, the UK dropped back from uh, 2035 and is now 2030 which is only nine years away from banning uh, um, internal combustion engines. 
So you can see that there's a lot of parameters that are going on, right? Or things that are all driving this disruption. And this was the breakdown of the electric vehicle sales in 2020. And whilst the percentage is still low, during June and December last year, they increased by 260%. And in December alone, 285 vehicles were sold. So this rate of change is increasing. So thank you, David. The presentation is really curious. And the question, which actually logically arises from the previous one, what factors does the implementation of electric vehicles in Europe depend on? So how do you think, uh, Andrian, what factors does this increase of electric vehicles depend on? Hmm. No, uh, the main factor and efficient for the main companies and individuals is primarily in the environment. But often many people are not interested in that issue based on the idea that my vehicle fleet is not large enough to bring such significant changes in the environment. Uh, the most important motivator for the growth on this segment is money or compensation for exploitation. Uh, since we won a seven year tender with the support of the government and the European Union, I want to show you how much the demand in Estonia for the poor chase of the electric vehicles has grown. And I have a slide for it. Um, so Valerie, can you please assist us with the slide? <laughs> yeah, please. So, mm, if you look at this slide, you can see quite good statistic on uh, which uh, electric cars are popular in our region and how much is it grow. And this demand appeared with this tender. Uh, what are the main terms and conditions? I'll show you. I'll show you a bit later. But I can say the main reason of the grow coming from compensation for exploitation in Estonia. Okay, so thank you, Andrew. And so, David, do, do you agree what, uh, with what Andrew just said? Do you have anything to yes. add to this? Well, yes. I mean, the, the, the main incentives we see is that um, it is going to be the carbon tax credits given by governments um, and the ban um, from, uh, from one day to the next if a a city or a, a zone ban IC vehicles, uh, that's a, a showstopper, that's it, finish. Um, but we see that the carbon, the carbon tax uh, or the rebates given for electric vehicles in Europe in general are usually about five to 6,000 euro. So, um, you know, that uh, takes an awful lot out of an electric vehicle costing 35, 40,000 euro. Um, and the next thing is that we are, because of the, the battery prices and the prices coming down, we are now looking at a price parity with an ICA when you can consider the total cost of Europe, of, of total cost of, um, of uh, ownership. Um, and the, the main issue from, from my point of view, is that the biggest take up of EVs are going to be on the leasing companies, rental companies, um, and the large fleet, well, the large fleet leasing companies. And they have to consider what the resale value of an internal combustion engine vehicle bought today, what it is going to be in five years' time. And majority of these do their total cost of ownership over a three to five year period. So we can see that as this disruption takes place, takes uh, grow, um, increases, that the, the resale value of traditional vehicles or ICE vehicles is going to diminish. So this is going to even drive it even more. And how do you think, David, when we should expect this, uh, so to say, peak of the development in this sector? 
Well, we think that it's going to be about 2035. Um, when we're talking about peak, um, this will continue up to probably 2050 or 2040. Um, I think we can expect in 2040, we will not see any more um, uh, internal combustion engine vehicles on the roads. But that's um, that depends on uh, depends on the also the the charging infrastructure which is available. Sure, sure. But uh, why actually this number? Uh, why this uh, twenty thirty five as you mentioned? So, do you have any well, like? Um... Well, the thing is that if you look through the countries in Europe that have banned banned. ICU sales or given a date when they will. Um, if you look at it, the the uh, well, the Europe in general, I mean, it's all around 2030 and 2035. Um, now, what, uh, what 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 is going to affect then is would anybody buy uh, an internal combustion engine vehicle if they knew it wasn't it was going to be worthless in five years time? It wouldn't. Um, and it wouldn't be allowed to anyway. So, I mean, the thing is that I think I, I would say that 2050 is stretching it a bit, but I think by 2050, there will not be any um, more internal combustion engine vehicles in Europe. Thank you very much. That's really interesting. Uh, so, um, Valerie, the stage is yours. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Uh, well, a pretty significant decline is observed on the electric commercial vehicle market due to COVID-19 and uh, post-COVID-19 times. I mean, lockdowns, uh, different restrictions. Uh, still, according to markets and markets, the electric vehicle segment will reach 1.89 million units all over the world by 2027 while there were fewer than 300,000 electric vehicle units registered in 2019. These numbers, if not in direct proportion, still influence the telematics market. So, how did the percentage ratio of internal combustion engine and electric vehicles change in the recent, say, three, four years in your country? David, would you like to answer? this question yes um it uh it grew up to about four percent last year um four percent of it were, were ev sales and of course the if you talk about percentages it, it, the overall vehicles um sales were down tremendously uh, because of the covid restrictions um so it's not really f fair to compare what what had happened pre-COVID, um, but it's it, it's about four percent. You mentioned four percent of exponential growth of electric vehicles. So, do you mean just Italy, your country, or the whole European region? Uh, it's over the Europe in general. European region. I see. Andrian, what about Estonia? Mm, I can say for a small country with a small population. Uh, uh, I can say that the percentage of sales of electric vehicles is constantly growing and already like reached a good level over the past three, four years. And it's still going to be growing, but how fast? I, I can't say exactly percentages. It's just my guess. Like, well, anyway, beyond all doubt, we're observing new market tendencies, which reflect a lot on telematics business. So uh, how do you try to adapt your business to these new market tendencies? David, what about IoT solution? Well, what we have started to do, we started a few months back now, we offer customers a fleet analysis of what vehicles they have and how many of those vehicles and their operations can be served by swapping to electric vehicles. Um, and, and then the second stage of that is obviously to propose a management system which makes this transition easier. Um, and if I can just show um, 
For instance, we have uh, something which we call the electric equivalent analysis, AEA, which means that we use standard um, devices um, to monitor a fleet over a two to three month period. We add in things like temperature and terrain, and then we analyze all that. And then we come back with a recommendation to the customer with how much he was saying in terms of fuel costs and how much he would sell in carbon. Uh, so he can then apply for the carbon credit. Um, and then going on from there, um, we then um, uh, we then can tell him how many of the vehicles in his fleet can be changed, how many should remain, um, how many can be hybrid, and how many can be straightforward plug-in uh, electric vehicles. And then using a database of electric vehicles, we can then come up with a recommendation of vehicles uh, with a cost per trip, for instance, if needs be. Thank you, uh, Andrew. And what what would you say about Carcops car out of valve? <laughs> yeah, out of valve. Uh, this is the correct one. <laughs> yeah, this is Esto this is Estonian word, but it's like uh, car security. So I mean, but uh, so science. This is the new market. All solutions for connecting to a CAN system or some additional solutions require study and development for sure. At the moment, we are the only company in Estonia who can set a block engine in electric vehicle, which gives us a certain advantage. We are also currently improving com functions, parameters with partners like Teltonica, Ruptera, or Xirgo. We are testing new features in order that further often to the client as a ready-made product. So I can, I can see that you're on the crest of the wave in Estonia, at least. Congratulations. Well, um, David, Andrew, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. That's actually really enriching what you are sharing with us, partners. And there is another point that we'd like to raise during this conversation, and it's related precisely to telematics features and parameters. It is evident that the scope of features that an integrated sh should follow in the internal combustion engine cars and in electric cars will differ, and some of the features may even become irrelevant, such as fuel control. So digging into more details on this point, what kind of must-have functionality would you define as, defined as the most relevant one for electric vehicles? Uh, Andrian, would you like to start? Mm, yeah, mm, I think that the most relevant parameters today for electric vehicles are the state of the battery and its charge. All other parameters have been known to us for a long time and have been practiced of many cars for a while already. So I guess, yeah, this is like two obviously important parameters what clients have to know. And so the major stages and uh, what else? Mm. Mm, actually, I don't know what to bring else because uh, uh, right now, like, not a lot of clients here, like in Estonia, are really like uh, interesting uh, to find out some good solutions. Uh, we try to offer something like also with Tiltonica to provide, um, for example. Mm, uh, if car gives you some issues, like uh, it, you have to go to the control or something else, so it could be good opportunity for the electric vehicles, but it, for the diesel and gasoline engines as well. So, like, I, so there is no differentiation here. Yeah. So I yeah, see. I can say there is not that different. So it's still vehicle, but electric. Okay, so David, what, what are your thoughts on this question? Well, I think that what we need to do now, we need to first of all find out what we can get out from an electric vehicle. And we are working, we've got three methods that we're trying at the moment. One of them is simple plug-in ODB device, uh, but the, there's not many vehicles that will give you directly out. Uh, then we're using a 
um, an ODB connected to a wired version. Um, and then we using one where we actually put the canvas uh, directly uh, through a, a, a non-Govanic uh, connection. Um, but remember, there is no standard ODB or canvas information for electric vehicles. Um, going on from that, what do we need to do on a um, on a uh, from a, a, a monitoring point of view? Well, we obviously have to monitor screen, um, and we have to show the state of charge. We have to. Uh, Give the uh, the kilometres that are left, kilometer, uh, sorry, the uh, kilowatt hours that are left, and also the autonomy, right? Um, now, on electric, that's one thing. Then, when you get to the hybrid, you're going to have to show both. You're going to have to show how many litres are in the tank and also what is available um, on in the battery. So, so the six things that we need to to monitor is location, state of charge, remain, remaining autonomy, vehicle type, because we need to know how big the battery is, so, because we, normally we can just get a percentage of the battery charge. So we have to know what the battery size was to begin with. Uh, trip and mileage, and then charging events is another important thing. Um, then on individual, Vehicles, this is an e-golf, for instance, we have to work out now what the battery level is and how many kilowatt hours are left, and we have to calculate also the autonomy. Um, and then on the dashboard, we also should now look and see, well, exactly what um, a fleet looks like, because it may not just be electric vehicles and diesel and petrol. It will also be hydrogen. It will be e-scooters. So we need to now give a dashboard to a fleet owner or leasing company or whatever we need we need to give them a dashboard which will reflect all of these all of these um, power plants or power systems okay yeah so thank you very much for this input uh, to this question valerie the light is on you well, no matter how precise our predictions on electric vehicle expansion are, in the era of connected technologies, the need in telematic solutions and different types of monitoring will stay unchanged. What will change and what will be adapted are the solutions from service integrators and consequently from uh, telematics providers. This is, say, uh, a mutual dependence based in the first place on the demand. So what would you define, gentlemen, as the main challenges of working with this market niche? Andrew, would you like to answer this question? I can say the main problem with the electric vehicle is that many models are new and there are no installation drawer or drawings or program numbers to connect with the candidate this is the problem to comes to uh, to my mind like and but it can be solved by time and study those cars so this is the this is the, yeah the main challenge probably you know uh, well i have just remembered uh, the word of david uh, from iot solution uh, who once mm. said to me valerie this is not a niche anymore we should perceive electric cars uh, absolutely equal to fuel or fossil fueled cars. Uh, David, could you please develop this idea of the challenges you're facing in this uh, already actual business direction in telematics? Well, um, I think as the previous speaker said, you know, it's a question of, of all of these vehicles have different, um, different CAN buses, they have different methods. Um, and we've seen that a lot of uh, vehicle electric vehicle manufacturers are very, very hesitant to give information out. Um, and a lot of them are actually running their own telemetry services now to give their customers. But how that's going to work out in a mixed fleet, we don't know. 
um, you know, if you've got Volkswagens one side and you've got Mercedes on another, or you've got Volvo or whatever, you know, how, how are you going to mix all those together? Uh, you know, Renault and Peugeot and all these, they all got different CAM buses. Um, so as the previous uh, speaker said, we're in a situation where we have to analyze every single one of those to see what we can get out from it and uh, what we have to calculate and what we can actually get out directly. Um, and this is a process we've been going through now for the last few months. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry. You're planning to share yeah. some slides with us. Yeah, okay. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the, um, the, the, the charging reports, for instance, you know, we have to we have to have a charging report which gives uh, gives the state of charge at the beginning, and the integration with charging companies, with electricity companies who are offering charging points, has to be coordinated with the Fleetmatics or the Fleetmatic or the the, the Fleet Telematics systems. Um, and that's really it. Uh, you know, it's uh, we've got a lot of challenges, but uh, I think we just got to go ahead. And uh, yeah, it's going to come sooner or later, whichever way it is. Yeah, okay. thank you very much. I do appreciate all your remarks, David, Andrew. They are hundred percent to the point. Thank you. Yeah, we hope that our audience is enjoying this talk uh, the same way we do. Today we're talking about the tendencies in the electric vehicle market and their possible impact on telematics. It's great to find out we have uh, such an international audience today and I'd like to use this chance to quickly remind you that we have a chat where you can share your thoughts and questions on the topic that is being discussed. At the end of this conversation we'll pick up the most interesting questions from the chat and address them to our experts. Thus, we really expect you to take active part in this chat. And um, in the meanwhile, let's get back to our topic. So as we already mentioned, telematics will re still remain relevant regardless of the vehicle type. So be that electric cars or internal combustion engine cars. However, the parameters for monitoring will differ. So another question we'd like to discuss is, it's not simple, uh, but still I, I'm sure that you have interesting ideas in this regard. What impact and why uh, may the electric vehicles market have on the telematics in the coming years? David, would you like to be the first to answer this question? Well, um, it will change traditionally uh, what we've been thinking about as telematics. Uh, one of the um, uh, issues that we're going to be faced up very quickly is the question of how we get the APIs, we get the APIs from the vehicle manufacturers so that we can integrate it into a, a general telematic system. Now, you know, Ford and GM are already offering those, P, those um, APIs um, to some of our competitors. So we have to do that and that will have to be done at a, you know, a while on a Gertham level, obviously. Um, uh, so that's one challenge. Um, the, uh, the, the other thing I think that we, that we've got to, um, we've got to get together with is really the situation of, you know, of what we're going to do with this state of charge and to make sure that we can display that in some kind of meaningful manner to customers. Um, and we also have to remember, and I think the, the, my colleague from Estonia will agree, you know, the biggest market for electric vehicles is going to be the leasing companies, the renting and leasing companies. Um, and, you know, whether they're just on rental, long-term lease. Um, and we've seen changes in the market where these leasing companies are now uh, being bought by the vehicle manufacturers with the backing of the banks, because they can see that the, the investment needed to, to make is quite large. But we've seen a lot of this going on um, 
with a lot of the leasing companies have now got together with um, vehicle manufacturers and the banks to offer this leasing and also the electricity companies here in Italy we've actually got the electricity companies that are going to rent vehicles so the idea is that you can actually get an electric vehicle you can go to your uh, if you're running a company you can uh, sign up with an electric company for all of your energy and they will just add on the vehicles onto your monthly bill and we've seen a lot of that and of course they have every incentive to because they will be selling the energy as well so um, yeah. and in fact i think a you know peugeot at the moment will cost about 350 euro a month on a, on a lease um uh, an electric vehicle um uh, a peugeot 350 euro a, a month lease um and the electric com company will do that for you so yeah. That's, that's so what thank, I think thank you. Been. Thank you, David. Uh, Andrew, and do you agree what, uh, with what uh, Nick, or with what David just already mentioned? Yeah, I absolutely agree with that because the main are like clients who actually got uh, electric vehicles is the leasing, leasing companies or rental companies. That's how they said. Okay, and uh, what are your thoughts? So what impact may this growth of electric vehicle segment have on telematics? Mm, I believe the electric vehicles will be able to influence the whole market and significantly adjust the telematics we already used to uh, because uh, customers all the time asking for the new solutions and if they have uh, like electric vehicles in their like fleet, so they definitely will uh, ask us more about uh, any solutions what they want to so uh, it's just it's just a question of the time when they're gonna ask it so right now i i definitely can't even say what what future gonna bring us but it's definitely gonna change yeah and we definitely need to be prepared for that right <laughs> yeah that's for sure <laughs> Yeah. So thanks a lot, partners, for your contribution to this question. Valerie? During the informal debate at the end of 2019 of European Union Environment uh, Ministers and European Union Commission, an idea of a ban on uh, fossil fueled cars was warmly supported. And by 2030, the ban will come into force in all the European Union countries. The countries cope with this initiative as best they can, launching specific policies, granting projects, uh, re rebating taxes, etc., etc. For those companies that decided to replace their fleets with electric vehicles. So, my question is, how does the government support electric vehicle expansion implementation in your country? Andrian, how does the government support electric vehicles in Estonia? Mm, I do, at the moment, I could say that the Estonian government and European Union is very active in supporting the, the use of the electric vehicles, even allocating a decent amount for compensations. Let's say the tender, what we won at the beginning, at the last year, helps ordinary people get compensation of 5,000 euros when a new electric car suggest of the several rules and these several rules you can see right now at the screen so uh, the, the the type of the vehicle have to be m1 m1 and or m1 uh, category vehicles the how i said before the amount of each vehicle could give you like a compensation for five thousand and the price have to be uh, at least five hundred thousand uh, the electric vehicle must cover at least 80,000 kilometers over a period of four years, which at least 80% of the amount taking place in Estonia. The owner of the vehicle that has received a direct grant is required to provide the EAC with information and the kilometers travel of the period of four years. Being benefactory has two options reading the uh, forwarded of information, either the consent, the installation of the record in the vehicle, um, 
or they must report the amount of kilometers traveled and uh, is once per year. Only reliable energy must be consumed when covering the first 80,000 kilometers traveled by electric vehicle and the maximum. Uh, this is for the companies actually at the maximum of the 15 vehicles must support their business. So this is like uh, the main terms and condition of the standard for the pretty much for the client. Uh, what's actually buying here in Estonia electric vehicles and try to get compensation for that. Uh, obviously, I can say this is like the most motivated uh, thing. Uh, the, pretty much the money and compensation to make people just buying these vehicles here in Estonia. Right now, that's how I see here. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. So this is about uh, just compensation or uh, separate specific grants for the companies who replace their fleet with electric vehicles. I mean, uh, my, my question here is how big, how significant could be uh, these grants for electric vehicles after having met uh, all the requirements you have just uh, enumerated? Mm. Do you know, do you have uh, such an information? Mm, actually, right now, straight away, not really. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, anyway. Well, uh, David, I also hope to get your contribution to the topic. Well, yes, here in Italy, uh, you know, the, I think you can get up to 6,000 uh, 6, euro rebate off when you uh, swap your existing car, uh, internal combustion car, for an electric vehicle. And that comes directly from the concessionaire of the electric vehicle, who will then claim from the government. Um, uh, but we are also seeing other incentives, which, as I explained before, are for company cars, where the company itself, we have what we call a um, a lista bianca, it's the white list um, here in Italy, which means that any company, company is offices, factories, or cars, transport fleets that um, save X amount of carbon can get a credit. So from the corporate point of view or the company point of view, there are a lot of other incentives that can be done on this. Now, I don't know how this is going to play out with the leasing companies, but I guess it probably will be the same. But there's a lot of incentives and if we are being bombarded on the television every day, um, uh, advertisements for uh, electric vehicles, for rebates, for um, tax credits and one thing or another. So the whole thing is is uh, gearing up. And I think as the as the manufacturers are anxious to start to ramp up the electric vehicles, um, we're going to even see more of it. But no, it's all, it's all happening. But it, it, at the moment, it's about five to six thousand euros, probably the same as in East Estonia. Uh, David, if any company from any business uh, sphere can be granted if uh, uh, they decide to replace their fleet with electric vehicles, or there are specific business niches that can participate in this uh, initiative? No, anybody can do it. A anybody. anybody can do it. Uh -huh, I see. Anybody, anybody mm -hmm. can do it. Yeah. Thank but, you. Uh, uh, all mm -hmm. of, sorry, just, yeah, just yeah. one thing, because we now got this big pan-European recovery plan which is, you know, uh, billions and billions and billions of money, which is being distributed everywhere. So we're waiting to see how much of that is going to be allocated to the new green economy. And we can expect that we're even going to get more money. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew and David, for these interesting insights. So, dear experts, in the first place, I'd like to thank you for sharing your fascinating and bright ideas about the electric vehicles markets openly today. 
to my mind, we managed to touch on the most important aspects uh, of this tendency and how it may change the future of telematics. I am sure uh, that our ideas uh, enriched our audience today. And actually, we, we had a really active audience today. And I would like, before we proceed with this Q&A session, I would like to read uh, the comment from Rajiv Bajaj from the chat uh, about the electric vehicle market as well. So it is expected that electric vehicles may have highly advanced Bluetooth 6.0 or Bluetooth 7.0 and smartphone may capture all this data, including stage of charge, batteries, and uh, an external installed telematics device may not be required at all. So what are your things uh, on this comment, uh, dear partners? What, what do you think? Do you agree with Rajiv? Well, I didn't quite, I didn't, it's Dave here. I, I didn't quite understand what was said. Um, are we, are we talking about the mobile apps that are available from manufacturers now? We're talking about some kind of mobile apps that will have a inbuilt Bluetooth mode, uh, as far as I understand, and uh, the device installation inside the car will not be needed anymore. So, yeah, th this is the idea yeah. as far as I understand. Rajiv, please correct no, no, me in the chat if I'm wrong. No, but it exists already. Uh, I can't see the chat. Mind. Um, okay. So, David, no, do, I mean, do, do, thing, do you agree? Yeah. Well, yes, I agree. Yeah, 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 I agree that that's it. But it is actually happening now. Yeah, that, that, that's true. Uh, what What about you, Andrew? And do you agree with what uh, Rajiv shared with us in the chat? Mm. I currently not uh, understand like what's the question because uh, if we say right now it's, it's working exactly the same because we uh, working like via a smartphone so you can just put the device and see all information in the phone so the point what he's tried to say it means like that uh, you can connect with the car and see the own information just via some application or what he tried to say like what yeah, like I, the I assume the, the idea phone. was like in Bluetooth stacks. So your smartphone uh, works as a Bluetooth stack and uh, actually no device installation is needed in the car. Anyway, uh, you're welcome to proceed this discussion in the chat uh, after in the partners chat we have in WhatsApp. Uh, so uh, because I see that the topic presents a high interest to many of you. So as promised, we've also picked up some interesting questions from our chat and um, we'll now address them uh, to you, uh, dear partners. We really apologize in advance if we don't have time to cover all the questions from the chat because this would put us out of timing. Nevertheless, you're more than welcome to contact me, Valerie, or your personal manager at the villain division directly as we are always open for discussion. So our first question is uh, the following. How can you measure internal combustion engine fleet against electric vehicles when you haven't considered the change in cost against fuel and electricity? David, would you like to answer this question? Do you have well, any yes, ideas? You, yeah. you, can, you can, you can, exactly, you can. I mean, it's, uh, you can compare. Um, but you have to you have to bring everything to a common denominator, and in the United States. Oh, here we are. Yeah, I have any minute. You have found the chat, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I've got it now. I've got it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, you can you can do that. Yeah, uh, but you have to you have to convert it to a common denominator and in the United States they've come out with this thing which is MPGE right which is taking gasoline or gasoline prices and then putting an E after it and then they come out with some kind of factor so they can go through a list of vehicles and they can come out with something called MPGE right which is the equivalence in Europe we don't have that at the moment from what I can gather I, I've never seen it so we don't have it so if you go through a list of vehicles that are on on um, let's see on a leasing company's um, um, 
list of vehicles available or you're a fleet manager and you've got a list of vehicles um you you really can't compare it unless you bring all all of that to some common denominator um so we need to get that done in europe i think very quickly so then we'll be able to compare one against the other yeah thank you david for for your answer and we have one more question from ranjan uh, who is asking uh, whether there are common platform uh, where data sharing between manufacturer and fleet management company uh, can be done like so to say andrew you're completely okay. lost in your thought are you thinking <laughs> of the question of ranjan <laughs> would you like to share your opinion on the matter uh, to be honest, I just tried to find that question. Anna, could you please repeat the question? Yeah, I will just repeat it. Uh, so Rajan asked whether there is any common platform where the data sharing, where, where there is some data sharing between manufa manufacturer and fleet management company. So co some mm. common interface, so to say, as far as I understand. Mm. Hold on. I can answer. Yeah, David, David, you, you can answer, sure. You're welcome. Okay, no, yes. In fact, uh, GM and um, Ford have such a API available, uh, which they will send the telematics data from their vehicles directly to a fleetmatics company. But that has to be integrated. General Motors and uh, Ford, you said. Ford, right? yes. That's the two that I know so far. Uh, this is one of the problems is that a lot of the manufacturers <laughs> don't want to give out a lot of that information. But they're going to be, it's going to be exactly the same situation as it was with the FMS before, where um, nobody, none of the manufacturers wanted to disclose what their telematics protocol was and one thing and another but in the end the company said well okay I'm, i want to buy x amount of mercedes x amount of volvos x amount of this dafts whatever um but i want them all on my platform so they had to come up with some commonality which was the fleet management system fms right but we don't have that uh, at the moment but, uh, and of course the other thing was that the ODB standard, which was put, started off in the United States, where we had a certain commonality, doesn't apply to electric vehicles because there's no environmental um, measurement that you can make out of the ODB on the electric vehicle. So that doesn't apply either. So this is where we are at the moment. Thank but you, David. The Thank you for your answer. Yeah, uh, so I would like to thank our audience as well for the questions. I can see that the topic is uh, of a high interest to many of uh, our partners. So you are more than free uh, to continue this discussion in our WhatsApp partners chat, as I already mentioned, or on our Gurtam forum. Nothing on earth passes without a trace, and every such event teaches us questions, motivates, ma makes us meditate, open a book or just start acting because this is the highest moment we got is inspired by electric business direction, won over this niche and implemented new VLAN based projects in this sphere together. You have everything you need to be successful. You have yourselves, you have your expertise and passion, you have VLON and VLON community. This is not a myth. This is not a fantasy. Well, maybe this is not still not so, so real, but the future is yours. I strongly believe that the future is ours. David, Andrew, I heartily appreciate your contribution to today's meetup. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for inspiring. I wish you good luck in all your business initiatives. For me, and I assume for Valerie as well, it has been an exclusive experience and a great pleasure to host this event today. Our meetup is finishing the second season of online Gurta meetups, yet more initiatives are to come from our site. We are organizing the IoT Awards for the second time. The format of this event is already familiar to some of you 
who already participated in IoT Awards 2020. Obviously, it's a huge amount of work from both partner side and the, the team of jury. Telematics integrators will present their best implemented projects in different business niches and the professional jury won't sleep a month in a row in order to select the best one. We invite you to get prepared for this event in advance uh, to express your interest to our team and I hope to see the project aligned with our today's topic there. We'll start to admit the applications uh, in the first half of April, so please stay tuned. Dear audience, thank you for joining us. The record of this meetup will be on our YouTube channel in a short time. Stay with us, meet us online, read our news, follow our events calendar on the Gurten blog. Please stay safe and see you. Thank see you. you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.